Hello. Here we are again for another exciting episode. Quite. Of the... It's been a bit of a nutcracker for me, at least. Yeah, a little bit. You've been doing a lot of research on one item. Lots of learnings. <laughs> Which I mentioned a long time ago that I'm still trying to crack. But any hoot, we'll get to that. We will. So today we went to uh, Caledonia. Not to be confused with Caledon. Yeah, I'd never heard of Caledon. But, um, and I had never heard of Caledonia. So there's obviously a Caledonia in Scotland, but it isn't that one. Um, this is the Caledonia in Ontario. Southern Ontario. is located on the Grand River. Yeah, it... It actually seemed to be quite a little tourist destination. Haldeman County. Yeah, funny, I'd never even heard of it. And it has a population of 12,000. Oh, really? A beautiful little town. It is. Um, So we went and did a little bit of mountain biking there. The weather has not been snowy. Not very wintry for now we're into February. Yeah, we wonder if it's ever going to do anything kind of wintry. We had a little bit of winter, but, you know, we're not there now. So. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we had a little little poke around, I suppose. I, I was going to say, you would normally say a poodle around. <laughs> it was a bit of a poodle around today. So on the Trail Forks, if you look up Caledonia, you'll see a little trail system. And there's one parking lot. It's actually a a bit of a country park, but it's actually a frisbee golf area, I believe, we discovered. Didn't Um, you say that there was even warnings to beware of of being hit in the head by a frisbee? Yeah, on the internet somebody said, um, when riding here, be careful, you may get hit on the head with a frisbee, which seemed a little bit bizarre to me. Um, Good thing we wear helmets. So on Travelogs there is a tra- there's a tour called the La Fortune Park Tour and that covers every rideable mountain bike trail apart from one within the park I noticed. So I think this place at some point was pretty cool probably. Somebody's put a bit of work into building some interesting trails here. And it's been on my list because it's a bit off the beaten track and it looked it looked like it could be interesting. So basically what it is, there's a railway line which runs uh, at on the top of the hill and then and most of the trails go up and down the hill where the railway line is. And I don't know what the elevation is, maybe 300 metres, would you say? Yeah, it's not massive, but it's enough to kind of get your blood pumping. And there's some green trails. Today they're a little bit squidgy, but there's also some access roads that are fairly hard standing or are hard standing. So even on a wettish day, you can go up the access road and then ride down the mountain bike trails so there's there was a few I mean we spent an hour riding around and exploring and collecting berries um, and we did four miles in like an hour which doesn't sound a lot but if you go there you'll see that that's actually quite a lot and we we didn't do the same trail twice I don't think Um, no I don't think we did no and it's a big mixed forest so quite interesting really and yeah just 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 north of the the grand river so it's quite a pleasant environment you keep seeing the river every now and then if you look kind of south when you're riding around so um they must i just realized we've kind of been slacking a little bit on our cone updates however most people seem to sling cones seasonally (laughs) I don't know what that's about, but uh, it did seem like a great town that would have a great cone stop, so we will report back on that come summertime, because I'm sure we will revisit this place. Just stay tuned. Yeah, it seemed like that, and also I think 
again we didn't stop today but I also think a good place for a ca- you know cafes a bakery all of those things really I think not yeah, that we did for sure pass any no but it felt like that kind of town it had free parking signs up um, yeah you were very <laughs> impressed with that yeah I just yeah it looked like the kind of town if you've been riding you could go and spend maybe half an hour just you know poking about see what you could see so I guess the trails were fairly easy but because of the weather conditions they're a little bit tricky and some of them are overgrown so I I think if we go back we might go back with a rake and do a little bit of a little bit of cleaning yeah not much there's just a bit needed um but that first trail was unrideable like it did need some love it was flooded as well which kind of didn't necessarily help but um yeah that first trail was a bit out of control but because there's frisbee golf there i think the trails that they use to get between the areas i think are the ones that are quite well walked there was other bicycle tracks there i noticed as well so so what did you think about it i know you liked the mixed woodland that was my favorite part was uh just the mix of trees and beautiful beautiful trees um some of the coniferous ones really stood out to me like i just kind of wanted to get in there and cuddle one (laughs) they looked so soft um yeah i would say that was my favorite part was just um a real stunning mix of forest and i mean it always helps when the sun is shining and we were uh we were blessed by mr sunshine today full on which just makes everything look a little nicer and a little more inviting uh so it definitely had that going for it but it was just a uh yeah, nothing too cra- nothing too crazy or too special, but interesting and just straight up fun. Yeah, I would definitely say wear black on a on a sunny cold day because it definitely makes it feel warmer. I was I ended up taking my coat off because I got hot at one point. So it was still chilly enough in the shade, though. Um, so good facilities. There was a nice car park. A um, couple of picnic tables I noticed on the way round. There was um, quite a few, actually. There was a porter pot- potty in the car park that wasn't terrible. Um, no, it was one of those nice, big, spacious yeah. ones that you can actually walk in and maneuver around. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was good. Uh, Five star <laughs> portaloo. Good, uh, <laughs> good signs as well. There was some signs about the garlic, the the non-native. Oh, yeah. That's true. And it was even almost, I would say, encouraging you to pick it, I do believe. Um, Which, you know, I feel like a lot of signage can sometimes be more on the negative end. Like, not necessarily um, negative. But yes, signs generally are discouraging you or making you beware of something. Whereas this one was just informing you and I think encouraging you to help yourself. Yeah go for it yeah um that was great so i think it was 1800 or something was it europeans brought wild garlic to canada because they needed more herbs and now it's like taken over everywhere so it is pretty invasive there is definitely no shortage of it um so yes that was that and then i noticed at the top of the hill there was a sign on a like a sign where the toilets would be normally and what did it say look here or come here or Look at this. Look at me, or something. I I don't know if I saw that one. Yeah, the sign near where the um, near where the pump out was for the trailers. I was too be- busy picking berries. <laughs> anyway, there was a sign, a big yellow sign that said "Look here" or something. I can't quite remember. Oh, it, um, for like news and events kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it did have a funny title that I kept yelling out every time. <laughs> and then I went up to look at it, and it was all of the wildlife that you would see on that park so it wasn't just birds it was wildflowers um insects reptiles uh yeah animals it was everything it was like six or seven color panels each side of the things that you might see which i thought was yeah pretty cool sorry you i do recall you mentioning this to me now but it was at the time where i was collecting berries you so were. I do apologize for being a bit distracted. Shout it out a few times so I thought you might remember. <laughs> I did and now I'm regretting not going to have a look at it because it sounds excellent. It? 
So the terrain today was okay. Um, some of it was wet and spongy. Okay. <laughs> but um, it was rideable. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, it's going to ruin the trails. It was like definitely rideable. The coniferous bits were pretty good. Um, if you do go there, just take your time there because some of the hills we went down, it's been a while since there's been any trail building and I definitely you know, ended up with my front wheel one side a bit of a wood and my back wheel the other side at one point. Like It was a little bit picky way through, just needs a bit of care. Uh, we might, like I said, go back and do a bit of a tidy up and actually if you were to go there and you took a rake, that's probably all you need. Um, and if the ground wasn't frozen, because I tried to move a log, but it was kind of frozen into the... It was. It was which quite was a bit, stuck. Which was a bit tricky. So, yeah, I think um, a lot of potential. So, Jessica made a discovery quite early on. <laughs> well, I've been trying to get to the bottom of this darn berry for quite some time now if anyone recalls me mentioning the viburnums i'm not even sure if i'm saying that right viburnum is right i think viburnum yeah so uh i did i have done a little bit more digging and a little bit more research and reading and even tasting and smelling um, all of the things all of the things uh so I think that there are several kinds of viburnums, and the three that seem to be are viburnum opulus, viburnum uh, trilobum, and viburnum, viburnum edule, if right. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing any of those right. So... The opulus one, I believe, is also known as the Gelder Rose. And I have read that this one is un like unpalatable. Um, <laughs> you will spit it out immediately. So I kind of thought that that's what I was finding, but I hadn't tasted it um, until today. I did. And what I tasted today was... Uh, Definitely reminiscent of a cranberry, so quite tart. Definitely a little bit bitter, but I wouldn't say, you know, spit it out, this is horrible. Yeah. So I'm pretty pretty darn sure that I've narrowed this down to uh, we are dealing with the trilobum variety, which is also known. In fact, I don't know if they're all known as high bush cranberries. That's another thing I'm struggling to... Uh, be certain about. So, uh, these are not part of the cranberry family, just as a side note. Um, they are red berries, probably about a, up to a centimeter in diameter, would yeah. you say? And they grow in clusters of, can be quite a few, or, I mean, on some of those clusters, I would say there's 15 or 20 berries, and on other clusters, maybe half a dozen to a dozen? Yeah, you've got a good, you made a good, uh, I don't know what the word is. I was going to say you made a good, but you've got a good haul there, haven't you? Yeah, not bad. Uh, some sources are telling me that they are mildly poisonous. I think that that's referring to the Gelder Rose variety. But also, I that could be just if it's consumed raw or in excess and i do wonder if that has to do with the seed we spit the seed out um but i do believe that they're all all are edible of in the viburnum family i'm going to make that statement uh particularly if cooked let's go with that also um they they do contain one single flat seed in them and as i mentioned they do taste very much like a cranberry i'd say they're super high in vitamin c and i think it when it comes down to it from what i'm gathering visually they're next to impossible to tell apart so this is one that you got to get in there and taste so the thing is is the smell is it not yes <laughs> 
Yes, that is also something to note here is, uh, and I, again, I don't know if this is for all of them that the smell is consistent or for one in particular, but these, I, I didn't learn until after the fact. I, I didn't smell them at the time, but definitely after bringing them home and laying them out, I took a big whiff <laughs> and, uh, whoa, it is like, as described, um, dirty, sweaty socks or smelly feet. So not the most appealing uh, fragrance. <laughs> However, the taste was, I would say, excellent. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing around in the in the kitchen with these. Um, the, the birds love them. They're great for the birds. And this is another berry that is even better after a frost. So here we are in just the very beginning of February and you know some of the berries I picked today look a little on the squidgy side but some of them are like perfecto condition. Yeah I, I mean they look like they should be part of an oil painting or something you know, like still life from a hundred years ago where they put them on a wooden in a wooden fruit bowl and painted them. I yeah it's like a cluster of grapes. Yeah, they're just, uh, but they're more vibrant than grapes. I guess that was my kind of point, really. As opposed to some of the ones that are a little bit more, looking like they're starting to collapse and dry Fall out apart. a little bit. Yeah, um, so I've kind of collected a combination of both. Um, they just, some of those dry, they just might not be quite as juicy, but I think that they're still just fine. Uh, so what else can I tell you? I mean, I think my observation is you've spent a lot of time you put a lot of effort into researching these like not to be underestimated like maybe you know every time we've been out through you know December January and February when we found them you've taken pictures of them you've tried to research them you've picked a few you've like it's taken time and I mean today you did say like I'm gonna put some real effort into finding out what they are it's not to be underestimated and kind of hopped on Google earlier and thought, oh, I'll find these, it's not going to be that difficult, and I did. And then Jessica said, oh yeah, you think you have, but now you need to look at this. And then I did, and actually it looked exactly the same, I guess. The only, the the reason we think we're right is because of the sweaty, smelly feet smell. But and again, I don't know for sure if they all smell that way. Well, that's true, but the flat seeds, which, you know, is the... Even that, I can't get to the bottom of what is the seed like in those other two varieties. So. And my, my research revealed no mention of seeds in any, so I, I was like, okay, excellent, this is, you know... Not. Well, they definitely have one single flat seed in them, which is consistent... But I think the big lesson that I've learned or the, you know, grand conclusion that I've come to <laughs> is that no wonder I was struggling to identify them um, definitively is because the bottom line seems to be that visually it's next, to, it's very difficult to tell them apart just by looking at them. You've got to get in there and taste them. And, you know, as far as the ones that are unpalatable, well, uh, you know, have a little chomp on it, spit it out. I don't think you'll want to swallow it from what I've read. And these ones definitely were not, uh, I didn't want to spit it out. I wanted to, I spit out the seed, but. So I will also just make note that there is another uh, potent medicinal feature of this plant, and that is the bark. And just to confuse things even more, you can, Google in a whole nother word there and um, look up cramp bark. So what, so this is, I'm not talking about the berries now, I am talking about the bark and it is supposedly great for relieving muscle cramps um, and improving blood flow. And what was so interesting for me to even read, I really struggle with my hands and feet with Raynaud's syndrome, and it was one of the things suggested for, for helping with that. And again, just improving or increasing blood, f blood flow. Um, but I think particularly it is great for menstrual cramps, and I even read about it preventing miscarriage. So I think the cramp bark you can um, you can have or take in a tincture. 
Um, so that's a whole nother adventure. I'm not going to get any more into that than just a little bit of info there for you. So there you have it. We've made a full circle kind of of the Viburnum's family. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, not to be underestimated, we put quite, well, we didn't, Jessica put quite a lot of effort into uh, into this, so. Yeah. yeah, so now I am finally going to play with some of them in the kitchen, and, you know, I'm seeing lots of uses for jams and juice and syrup, so I will, no doubt, add my wonky spin on that. <laughs> So also, if you take a look at the website, which is, uh, there's a link in the bottom of the description for this episode, but there'll be some pictures, I would think, in the gallery of some of this stuff from today. Also, there'll be some recipes up there, which Jessica will put up there. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye on the website, because there's new recipes going up every week. And I think that's it for me. One more thing to say? Go for it. Get lost! <laughs>